Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'll show you battery saving tips on iOS 26, mostly for newer iPhones, but also useful for older ones. I'll keep this video short and to the point, only tips, nothing else. Quick disclaimer, I don't guarantee results, but in my own use, I have gained about 10 to 25 extra minutes of screen on time. That only works if you follow all the settings I mention though some of them might affect your overall iPhone experience. Alright, let's go. Alright, let's start with the most obvious one, battery settings. If you've upgraded to iOS 26, you will notice a new option called power mode on the latest and last gen iPhones. Here, make sure to turn on adaptive power and adaptive power notifications. Why? Because adaptive power learns your daily usage and adjusts performance to maximize battery life and screen on time. The notifications will also prompt you to quickly enable low power mode whenever your iPhone thinks it's needed. Just tap it and boom, you instantly save more battery. Next, head over to charging limit. If you want maximum screen on time, set it to 100%. But if you care about long term battery health, set it to 80%. You'll sacrifice a little SOT, but your battery will last longer over the years. Personally, when I know I'll be out for a long day, I set it to 100% till tomorrow and then it automatically goes back to 80%. Super convenient and I don't have to worry about forgetting. Also check your battery health. If it shows service, then you really have two choices. Either replace your battery or consider upgrading your device. For example, I replaced the battery on my old iPhone 11 after 2 years and it gave me another 3 years of solid use. Finally, while you're still in battery settings, check the app battery usage. If you see an app draining power in the background that you don't even use anymore, just delete it. That alone can save you some juice. Now go to general background app refresh. First thing set it to Wi-Fi only, that way apps refresh only when you're on a stable Wi-Fi connection instead of eating battery on mobile data. Next, scroll through the app list and turn off refresh for apps you don't really need running in the background. For example, I have disabled it on a bunch of apps I rarely use. And honestly, you won't even notice the difference in daily use except for the extra battery life. Back in general settings, head to keyboard. Here you can turn off keyboard sound and haptic feedback. If you text a lot, disabling both can save you an extra 1 to 2 minutes of screen on time daily. Personally, I keep sounds off since they're annoying, but I leave haptics on because turning them off makes the typing experience feel worse. So dearly, it's up to you. If you want every bit of battery life, turn them both off. If you want a better feel, just keep haptics on. One more thing. Be careful with software updates. Before updating to the latest iOS, always check reviews from other users or YouTubers to see if there are any battery drain or performance issues. My tip is to wait at least one or two weeks before updating, unless you really need a specific new feature. For example, my dad used an iPhone 6 Plus for years without updating and it ran super smooth. But eventually, some banking apps stopped working, so he updated. And that update completely slowed down the phone. He had to buy a new iPhone after that. So my advice, don't rush updates unless necessary. Waiting a bit can save you a lot of headaches. Next, let's head into the Apple Intelligence and Siri settings. Now, if you don't have Apple Intelligence yet, it will simply show as Siri settings. Here's one quick tip. Turn off Hey Siri, why? Because when Hey Siri is enabled, your iPhone is constantly listening in the background for that activation phrase. This keeps the microphone active all the time, which can slowly drain your battery. I've personally turned this off on all my devices, even on my iPad and my family's phones, and the difference in battery life is actually noticeable. Don't worry. You can still use Siri, just hold down the power button and you'll be able to prompt Siri instantly without wasting extra battery life. Another important area to check is your display and brightness settings. First try using a dark or black background. On OLED screens, which the iPhone 17 has, darker wallpapers help conserve power since black pixels actually use less energy. 
A minimalistic or plain black wallpaper works great here. Next, make sure your auto lock is set to the shortest time that's comfortable for you. The quicker your screen turns off when idle, the less battery you waste. Now, if you're using a pro model with an always on display, I highly recommend turning it off. Based on my own testing, this feature alone can drain 3 to 4% of your battery per day, even if you disable wallpaper showing. Here's a bonus trick. I've set up a shortcut with the action button to toggle always on display. So when I need it, I can just click to turn it on. And when I don't, another click turns it off. This gives me full control while saving extra battery life. Next, head over to privacy and security. Then tap on location services. Here you'll see a full list of apps that use your location. If you find apps that don't really need it, just switch them off or set them to while using. This makes sure your phone isn't wasting battery tracking your location in the background. Now scroll down to system services. Most of the options here are unnecessary for daily use. I've personally turned almost all of them off and it doesn't affect my iPhone experience at all. The only one you might want to keep on is home kit or home accessories if you use them. Everything else, just turn them off it's an easy way to squeeze out more battery life. Finally, go to analytics and improvements under privacy and security. You can safely turn off all these options. It won't affect your phone's performance, but will help save battery. You can also choose to disable share iPhone analytics if you want. One note, if you have an older iPhone and want to track your battery percentage and cycle count, you'll need to keep analytics turned on. On modern iPhones though, battery stats are available directly in battery settings, so this isn't necessary. And this was it. If you have any doubts or questions, please drop a comment. I'll do my best to answer each and every comment. And if I miss one, well, unsubscribe me. Just kidding. Seriously though, comment below and I'll make sure to help you if I know the answer. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Thanks and bye bye.